we often think about productivity and creativity as two sides of the same coin. On the one hand, we have left-brained analytical productivity, and on the other, we have more creative, free-flowing, artistic, right-brained creativity. These two things may seem like opposites at first, but they are actually more like dance partners, working together to help you make ideas, plans, and dreams come to fruition. Today, we're gonna to talk about how productivity and creativity are different and how you can use them together to help build the life that you want. Let's start with some definitions. So creativity is all things playful, free-flowing, artistic expression. It's that feeling you get when you're in the shower and you're humming a tune and then bam, you have a new idea for a great song. This doesn't necessarily mean that creativity as a concept is limited to the fine arts though. So like painting, music, we think of those things as creative, but in fact, all callings in life from the artsy to the businessy have an element of creativity built in. Creativity is about improvisation, following the gut, and being receptive to all the dreams and messages and sensations that the, the universe, universe is sending, sending you to get a little woo-woo on you. And that can happen just as easily during a business meeting when you're brainstorming ideas for the future of your business as it can when you have a blank canvas in front of you and a paintbrush in your hand. Productivity, meanwhile, is straightforward, analytical, it's deadline driven, and it's about getting things done. You have probably seen this all over the internet and on my channel as well. There are tons of strategies for being productive and being more productive, like to-do lists, time management, even planners, and things like that are all about being productive and getting stuff done. When we are productive, we are like trains. We are using all the different parts of our machinery together on one straight track, working towards getting to our next destination. And just like with creativity, you can be the most right-brained, creative, spacey person in the world, but you still need some productivity tools to help you achieve your goals, whatever calling of life that you're in. When productivity and creativity are out of balance, you either end up like a soulless productivity machine on one hand, just doing tasks, forever until you burn out, or you can end up in a world of imagination and never actually accomplish anything that you're dreaming of. It's really important to learn your personal signals for when you're out of balance. Everybody's a little bit different, but your body will send you signals, trust me. For example, if you are too productive, right? If all of your days look like this, or all of your days are too productive, too scheduled out. You might start to feel anxious and also like physically ill. Being too productive and overworking yourself can lead to the dreaded burnout, which takes a huge mental and physical toll on you and can take months to recover from. I talk about this a lot on my channel uh, about creating space in your schedule for your own mental health. And actually this is an example of what I did with my bi-weekly schedule where I was really trying to create space for myself and leave like blank spaces in the calendar and see my uh, tasks from a bird's eye view so that I could plan in the space to take for my mental health and for my creativity because I do really believe that that's one of the solutions to burnout. But you should also try to identify what's burning you out and treat it from the source. So maybe your job expectations are unreasonable and you need to have a conversation with your supervisor, for example. But also spending too much time on cre being creative can damage your trust in yourself to actively get things done. So creative thinking is play, possibility, imagination. It's like creating the Pinterest board. Like if you were doing a home to redesign, it'd be like creating the Pinterest board for the home redesign, but not actually ever going out and buying the pieces. If you design everything to a T and then don't accomplish any of your designs or goals, you can kind of start to feel like there's something wrong wrong with you, right? And there's not, don't worry. But it does tend to lead to a feeling, at least for me, that I can't accomplish my goals. When I start to feel this way, I tend to move from creative pursuit to creative pursuit, coming up with other ideas, but never actually fulfilling any of them. It can be kind of exhausting and make you feel lethargic. So there are tips and tricks to getting over this, like practicing just getting started, you know, other tips and tricks. We'll talk more about them later, but it really can be sort of a, a burnt out on creativity kind of feeling. The fact is that our brains are always trying to keep these two things in balance with or without us knowing. Your brain actually knows the difference between productivity and creativity and knows you need both. So it does this kind of fun thing where based on different time periods in the day, it will either be optimized for productivity or optimized for creativity. And this happens every single day according to our circadian rhythms. So imagine if you will, that this is a map of your day. On this side, it's energy down here, is time, so this is waking up, going to sleep. Our daily circadian rhythms are mapped out. They are hardwired to prefer productive analytical tasks in the morning, usually a few hours after we wake up. This is called our peak, 
And this period is great for any decision making, high priority tasks, or other things that require a great amount of willpower. So the peak is for productivity. And then as we go through the day, our energy levels change. They dip toward the afternoon and then they recover in the evening. This recovery period is where you wanna be more creative. Our brain actually prefers to do creative work in the early evening, it's called the recovery. All of our willpower has been used up by this point. Our brains feel more flowy, maybe not able to make hard decisions, but definitely able to be in touch with the sort of like subconscious of our mind and flesh out and be inventive with ideas without putting anything into practice, right? Because our energy is really high up here. This is when we put things into practice, when we're productive and the recovery is when we are recovering from all of that effort and our brains just sort of like to wander and like to be creative. And then you sleep and you do it all again the next day. I actually made a whole video about the effect our circadian rhythms have on our productivity. If you wanna check it out, I'll leave it linked up in the cards. But the basic gist is that your brain is trying to keep these two things in balance at all times and give you enough space to explore both your creative side and to really tackle those things that need the, your productive side every single day. So you should be taking advantage of it. So let's talk about some tips for keeping them in balance. Creativity and productivity are dancers, remember? So we need to just let them dance. However, we can help them along by setting the tone and pace for the music using these strategies. So number one, I recommend learning how your body feels when you're out of balance. You need to be listening to the cues your brain is giving you that you are out of balance. And you can do this really easily or get started with this really easily by referencing the circadian rhythm that I mentioned in the previous section. Start to notice or journal about or record somewhere how it feels when you are at peak productivity. What bodily sensations are good, right? Is your head clear? Is your body, does it feel like it's very energetic, like sprightly, like you could stand or run. And how do you feel when you are in the evening, when on this recovery period, after you've hit your lowest energy point of the day and you're coming back up and feeling more creative, what does that feel like in your body? Is your mind more receptive? Are you more happy to talk about and brainstorm new ideas, even if they change your plans? Do you feel artistic in the evening, like when you're cooking dinner or when you are sitting down to journal at the end of the day? What does that actually feel like? What is the release that you're getting from that? Um, and how does it feel when you're doing the opposite, being creative when you need to be productive and vice versa? Often I find that my creativity, I can do many creative tasks at my peak, such as like writing a script, right? It's creative, but I also need to push through it and be productive. So I can often do creative tasks really efficiently in the productivity peak zone. But if I try to put productivity into my recovery period, I will not get it done. I simply won't because my brain is not hardwired for productivity, for decision-making, for analytical thinking at this point. However, creative thinking in the morning can work, but you might find yourself feeling a little bit more like, okay, yeah, this thinking is creative, but I want to make a decision on this. I want to land somewhere on this. It's not good for brainstorming. It's really good for deciding. Another thing you want to do when you are trying to keep these two things in balance is zero in on your favorite productivity methods and your go-to creative releases so that when you're feeling uncomfortable and out of balance, you know exactly what to do. For example, I like to creative journal when I need a creative release. So when I'm feeling antsy, when I'm feeling unable to make decisions, but like I should be doing something, Thing. I know that I need a creative release and I come to one of my journals. I use lots of washi, ephemera stuff I find around and just basically paste it into one or more of my creative journals to sort of like find a release of some kind and usually it's pretty effective journaling and using stickers and setting up spreads and things like that just makes me feel so calm. So it really, really helps when I'm feeling overworked. Meanwhile, one of my tried and true methods for productivity is just turning to a blank space in my planner, can be any blank space, and creating a brain dump. This helps me see everything that's overwhelming me. If I find myself having not gotten a lot done recently and I'm spending all my time like creating artsy projects like I showed you in these journals or doing too much brainstorming and making game plans but never actually achieving them, it really, really helps me to turn to a blank page, get a brain dump out, and then I can see everything that I have to do, everything that's stressing me out, and then it's no longer taking up the mental real estate in my head. I also then like to organize 
organize my to-do list, which helps me prioritize what I should be working on right away. So for example, this is the Eisenhower matrix. I've talked about this in a couple of other videos, but it really, really helps after you brain dump, get everything out of your head to determine what is both important and urgent. And that is what you should be doing right away. So it gives you a really easy place to start and helps you understand what you should do with the rest of your tasks if they're not both urgent and important. Another tip you can do to balance and make sure these two are kept in balance is to schedule in creative breaks. So for example, this is a sample schedule that I created and you can see I'm leaving lots of time in between a bunch of different blocks of tasks that I have to do in order to make sure that my brain gets a rest and can pursue some more unstructured creative activities. You can build these into your workday or you can do something like doing a Pomodoro, which is essentially where you set a timer for 25 minutes and you then work for 25 minutes and then once that goes off, you schedule yourself a five minute break. And during these five minutes, you get to do these unstructured creative things that you wanna do. And then you repeat this whole cycle four times until you give yourself a longer 15 to 30 minute break. And you can structure your Pomodoros however you like. So I've heard people who have like ADHD find that actually setting a 15 minute work block is more effective than setting a longer one. I know of people who like to do a lot of deep work who schedule like hour long or 50 minute long Pomodoro techniques and then they break for 10 minutes or something a little bit longer. So whatever works for your brain, that's great. You just need to make sure that you, if you are doing productive tasks all day or maybe you have a job where productivity is prioritized over creativity like a lot of unfortunately a lot of workplaces these days make sure you're building in these unstructured breaks for yourself because it's really going to help you and help your brain balance it all out so productivity and creativity are partners you need them both to accomplish your goals your dreams and live a fulfilled and balanced life i'm also kind of curious what you guys think i know we have a lot of both productivity people and creativity people in this community so go ahead down in the comments and leave a a sparkly heart emoji if you feel like you're more of a creative person or a pencil emoji if you feel like you're more of a productivity person. And of course, leave your tips for balancing the two because I know you guys have them. By the way, hi, I forgot to mention in the intro that my name is Rachel. I know we have a lot of new people who have joined this community and I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you guys for watching, for being subscribed, for being awesome, and I will see you guys in the next one.